Hi everybody, it's Miss Cristobal. We're back in science. Properties of materials. We're on chapter 3, lesson 4, writing design arguments. In our first activity of our lesson, we will evaluate evidence. We will evaluate our evidence. To evaluate means to judge how useful or accurate something is. In this case, we are deciding whether the ingredients we tested will make a glue that has the properties we want. Let's look at the table Jess made to evaluate his evidence. So this is from the book, Jess Makes Hair Gel. On the side, he listed different substances. At the top, he wrote the properties he wanted. So I can see from the arrow, one of the properties that he tested was to look shiny and make spikes. And one of the substances that he tested were egg whites. If a substance did have one of those properties, he wrote yes. And if it didn't, he wrote no. Then he added notes about other properties the substances had. So for egg whites, he wrote yes, that it looks shiny. No, it doesn't make spikes. And for his notes, he wrote that it was too thick. So we're going to use a table just like what Jess did to evaluate our evidence too. The substances we tested are listed on this side and the properties are at the top. So are the substances that we have? Corn starch and water that's been heated and cooled, flour and water, corn syrup, and gelatin and water that's heated. And the properties that we have so far, strong and sticky. So remember in our last lesson, we were thinking and choosing a new property for our glue. Let's add that into the new property in our substance table. And our new property is that it's thick. So I wrote that in. In this table that we saw in our last lesson, we evaluated two different kinds of evidence from what we read from our interesting book of Handbook of Ingredients and the results from our strength test. So we're going to use our evidence here to look at what we wrote and help us complete our class substance table. So you could pause your video if you'd like to take a look at this and to remind yourself of our results from the strength test and from the handbook of interesting ingredients. So now you're gonna see this class substance table. What we're gonna do is we're gonna write yes or no to show the substance has the property. My first question is, based on our evidence, should we write yes or no under strong for cornstarch and water? Here, let me go back to this page again. So I'll go back to cornstarch and water. And now we're looking for strong. Hmm. So I think no. So now we will work together to decide how to fill in the rest of the table. I have the big pause picture so you can pause the video and complete the table on your own. And I'll share my table next. So remember, if it has that property, you'll say yes. And if it doesn't, you'll say no. So go ahead and pause your video. Hope you had some time to fill in the rest of the table. I'm going to show you how I filled in the class substance table. Here it is. So for cornstarch and water, I wrote no for strong, yes for sticky, and yes for thick. For flour and water, I wrote yes for strong, yes for sticky, and yes for thick. For corn syrup, I wrote no for strong, yes for sticky and no for thick and lastly for gelatin and water i wrote yes for strong yes for sticky and yes for thick i'm wondering if our substance table matches or if you had different ideas i'm also wondering if you wrote anything in the notes table i kind of left that blank so we have gathered a lot of evidence on the different properties of each ingredient now you need to think about which of these substances you want to use for your glue. We're coming to a key concept in our lesson. Mixtures may have some of the properties of their ingredients. By choosing the ingredients, we can create mixtures with the properties we want. So what ingredients could give our new glue the property we chose? Remember, we now have three goals for our glue. It must be sticky, it must be strong, and lastly, this is the newest one, must be thick. So based on those goals, I'm wondering 
and start thinking about what ingredients might give those new properties. In this next activity, we will write a design argument. We will write a design argument about which glue ingredients we plan to use. This template will help us to write. It's like something that we've used before. So you can take this out of your packet. It's called writing a design argument, my glue plan. Or if you don't have this in your packet, go ahead and get some paper and something to write with. And we will go through this worksheet together. Remember, engineers need to be able to explain their design ideas clearly in writing. We will be presenting our glue ideas to the principal soon. The writing we are doing today will help us to organize our evidence and get ready to plan our next glue recipe. Remember, it's important to use many sources of evidence. So I'm thinking, what sources of evidence can we draw from when we are planning what ingredients we will use and writing our design arguments? Let's think back to all the lessons that we've done so far leading to this lesson today. Here it is. We can use our observations, sticky test results, strength test results, evidence from the handbook of interesting ingredients, evidence from Jess makes hair gel, and our own experiences. Wow, that's a lot of evidence that we can draw from. So now we're going back to this worksheet. What ideas do you have about which ingredients will best meet the design goals? Can you support your ideas with evidence from different sources? So you can see in the worksheet, there's an arrow pointing which ingredient will best meet your design goals. So I will show you how we can write a design argument about glue ingredients. I will talk about my thinking as I fill out the worksheet. First, remember our design goal. My design goals are to make a glue that is sticky, strong, and thick. Next, I'm going to answer which ingredients will best meet your design goals. Here's mine. Heated gelatin, flour, and water will make a glue sticky, strong, and thick. And lastly, how do we know? What is our evidence? I know because the heated gelatin mixture and flour mixture did the best on the strength test. Gelatin mixture had 14 washers. Flour had 10. Might be our, you might be wondering, what is a design argument? Here are some things to remind us. Number one. It answers the question with a claim about what best meets the design goals. Number two, it connects evidence to each of the design goals. Evidence can be observations, information from tests, and ideas from books. And lastly, it uses scientific language. So I want us to pay attention to this last one. It uses scientific language. If you're wondering what, that might, what might that look like or what does that mean? So in this page, has several examples of what scientific language looks like. Let's read it. So here's some things that you can write. I know because, I observe that, I learned that, I learned that, I read that, and this is why. So these are some sentence starters that you can use if you, want, you are adding scientific language in your design argument. Now we're coming to another key concept. Mixtures can be designed for certain purposes by using ingredients with certain properties. We're coming to a third activity in our lesson, writing a glue recipe. In earlier lessons, we analyzed and evaluated test results to understand which ingredients would best meet our design goals for glue. So here you can see our design goals poster. The arrow is pointing to our goals for our glue. We know that our, our glue must be sticky, must be strong and thick. So next we will work in to plan, make, and prepare to test glues that meet our design goal. So we're coming back to this design cycle. We're going to plan, we're on to make, and prepare to test. So now that you know what ingredients you wanna use in your glue, but you haven't yet decided how much of each ingredient to use. So we're gonna use what you wrote in your own design argument to write down our recipe. Now you can turn to this page in your packet, or if not, you can always use a paper and pencil. And this page is called Notes for Our Glue Recipe. So we will write our own glue recipe using the ingredients you already chose in your arguments. For this lesson, we will plan for glue what? But if you have some time at home and you want to plan 
you can also plan for glue too. So you will list your ingredients in the table and then circle how many spoonfuls you plan to add of each ingredient. You could circle a half spoonful just like this as it's shown in the arrow. So you can list your different ingredients. So think about how much of each ingredient to use. Then you're gonna write your own glue recipe. So that's why I have this pause button for you so you can think about what your glue recipe and how much of each ingredient you wanna use. Go ahead and pause your video. Some time to write your own glue recipe. I'm excited to hear about it and know how successful it is. Ready to move on to our next part? In this next part of our lesson, we will make and discuss predictions. Next, we will make predictions about the strength of our glues. Now, why do scientists and engineers make predictions? They make predictions to help them to know what to expect and what to look for. Based on what you observed, how many washers do you predict your glue will hold? Now you can record your predictions. Go ahead and pause this video and record your prediction. What is your prediction? I'm wondering how many washers do you think your glue can hold? Maybe 10, 20, 30? Here's another key concept in our lesson. Mixtures may have a combination of properties of their ingredients. Here's another one. Mixtures can be designed to have certain properties by using ingredients with certain properties. So we have all designed glue mixtures to have certain properties. In the next lesson, we will get to find out if the ingredients we chose gave our glue mixtures the properties we wanted. Remember, the goals for our glue is to make it strong, sticky, and is the end of our lesson today. In today's lesson, we completed our substance table with all the different substances and properties that we wanted. We wrote a design argument. We came up with a glue recipe. And finally, we made a prediction on how strong our glue might be. I hope you had fun and I hope you learned a lot and I will see you next time.